Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory bolt action video. In today's episode, we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another bolt action unit. Recently, we've been delving deep into German tanks, but I decided it was time for a change. Let's head out to the Far East and look at Germany's ally, Japan. Now, we have quite a few IJA players in the Mordian Glory community, and I thought it was about time that we took a look at some of their vehicles, because surprisingly, actually pretty good and damn points efficient. A bit of a stark contrast to their historical performance, especially in the late war. And out of all of the Japanese tanks in bot action, there is one that people keep asking me to look at and so today without further ado we're gonna have a go at the good the bad and the ugly of the type 92 tankette as is tradition let's begin with a brief overview of the unit Officially, the Type 92 was designated as a heavy armoured car, but despite its name, it was a fully tracked tankette. And as a light tank, it was heavily used by cavalry formations and mostly deployed in Manchuria and Korea. But the good news is that it did have a principal service from 1932 to 1945, and so, from a bolt action perspective, that means we can use this thing at any point, any time period. So, whether you are playing an early war game, mid war, or late war, you can use the Type 92 tankette. And if you're the kind of person that likes to try and keep things historical, you'll have no problem doing so. As for the unit itself, it has a varying points cost, as is the case with many bolt action units, depending on what veterancy you're going to take it at. As inexperienced, it will cost a measly 72 points. At regular, it's still an absolute bargain at 90 points. And even if you decide to go up to veteran with this thing, it's only 108 points, making it a very affordable armored vehicle. Normally, when I suggest a veterancy for a tank, I land on regular because it's a nice middle ground with German tanks, you tend to find if you go veteran, it hugely inflates the cost. But if you go inexperienced, then you're taking an expensive tank and just making it worse. The thing with the Type 92 tank get, and often the thing with most Japanese armor, is you can kind of get away with taking it as veteran. It only costs 18 points more to do so, but you get a very important boost, which is leadership 10. Now, sure, this is a light vehicle, and so if someone does try and shoot it, they're more than likely going to be able to penetrate armor, so you won't feel the other side of veteran, which is you can ignore pins that can't hurt you. But if you take it as leadership 10, this thing doesn't need to be babysat by an officer. It can just pootle around on a flank, independent, looking after itself. Whereas if you take it as regular, the moment it gets hit by something even as simple as an anti-tank rifle, which may not damage it, but will definitely put a pin on it, then it goes down to leadership 8. That is no sure thing to get an order test off. And I mean, it's, you're more than likely to get it off, but it's not guaranteed. And so you might need to have an officer around to babysit it. But if you make it veteran and it gets one pin, then you're leadership 9. So that's a very comfortable leadership, and it means that the Type 92 can operate independently. I still think most people will gravitate towards regular, because especially if you're playing a competitive game, you want to squeeze every point and be as efficient as possible. But I would say in this case, do not dismiss the veteran. You've got to the end of your list, you've got a few points left over, and you're thinking of just adding in some random upgrades that you'll probably forget about throughout the game anyway. Don't do that. Instead, Look at making your little tankette veteran. Regardless of what veterancy you go for, each Type 92 tankette is equipped with one turret mounted heavy machine gun, not medium, heavy machine gun, and then one forward facing hull mounted MMG. This is truly a very interesting complement of weapons and makes the Type 92 quite a flexible vehicle. You see, normally when we're looking at 
armored cars and tankettes, you end up finding that they're equipped with an MMG, or at best, two MMGs. Sometimes they've only got one LMG or something like that. So they can have very limited firepower. And even if they do have two medium machine guns, which allows them to put out a decent volume of fire, whilst they can cut down in experienced and regular infantry fairly consistently, the moment they come across anything tougher, even something as simple as veteran infantry, their efficiency drops off quite a lot. Their ability to do damage really starts being impacted. And so what you tend to find is they just become pinning machines. And they might get a pin or two over the course of a few turns. And you might find that if they pick off a casualty, that's kind of a juicy bonus. But with having a HMG and MMG, sure, you are trading a bit of volume of fire because the HMG is only going to put out three shots. But those shots are going to have pen plus one. And so you can actually use the Type 92 tankette to go after those more durable infantry types. Because getting those veterans and wounding them on fours makes it suddenly just much more achievable. You can also use a Type 92 tankette to actually threaten other tankettes and light armoured vehicles. Rather than having a situation where you have both sides that are running around with light armour, playing it very meta, and the light armour is not really engaging each other because it's both just machine guns. And so you've got the light armour that's bullying the infantry whilst the infantry and support teams are desperately trying to deal with the light armour. What you're fine with the Type 92 is most of the time it's going to go after the infantry but if it needs to get into a one-on-one -on -one battle with another light vehicle it absolutely can do in a meta where things like the panzer uh, panzer one are quite quite popular because they're just 70 points of cheap armor and they get that double machine gun your type 92 tankette if you get into a not historical game obviously but a more competitive game might actually have the edge. And as heretical as it might sound, as controversial, this Japanese light vehicle has the edge over that superior or supposedly superior German technology. So it's quite a good little vehicle because you can threaten other bully tanks with it. And you can also, of course, go after things like light vehicles, like trucks and other transports, which are very popular no matter what kind of action game you're playing, competitive or historical. Now, we focus a lot on that heavy machine gun, and that's because it's quite a unique thing to find on an armoured car like this. But let us not forget about the MMG. That's providing a very important service in the form of volume of fire. If the Type 92 only had an HMG, even if it had double HMG, it would really struggle in what its principal role would be as an infantry bullier. But because it's got the MMG as well, you can still get enough volume be a threat to regular and inexperienced infantry and if in doubt play the pinning game but moving on from the weapons next up we have the damage value which is seven plus this is very common in the japanese armored roster you'll find most of your vehicles even your proper tanks are going to be armor seven plus with the heaviest armor you're likely to feature being a light tank in the form of the chiha or the kai shinto you do get some later war vehicles which get the heaviest of armor being a medium tank but most of these you'll find were very late war and kept for the defense of the islands so if you're a japanese player and you're looking or you're looking to get into the japanese inbot action then get very comfortable with the fact that your armor is light and seven plus isn't the low end it's the norm finally we have the special rules and the type 92 has a very good one which is recce we've spoken about recce before on these unit overviews and how it's such a powerful rule if you're not familiar with it i'll give you a brief overview essentially if you've not activated your unit already in a turn let's dice out and then when your opponent uh pulls a dice out and goes oh i'm going to shoot your recce unit your type 92 get in this case then you can go hang on I'm going to react. Very much like you can react with infantry and you can go down to make it minus two. A recce vehicle can react and when you place the down dice next to it, it actually gets move. And it can move forward, it can move backwards. And if the opponent, after you finish making your move, can't see your vehicle anymore, can't see your recce unit anymore, their shots are wasted. This is a very important distinction and 
if you're someone who's familiar with games such as Warhammer 40k, where if someone has a stratagem or something that can stop you from targeting a unit and then you can go retarget something else, that's not the case about action. It's much harsher. It's much more cool with its recce, with its retargeting rules. And so if you just can't see the vehicle, so if you take your Titan Wrench 2 and you just put it behind some dense terrain and the enemy just misses, just can't see it, and that's it. Their expensive vehicle may have been wasted. And considering how cheap this thing is at 90 points, if someone takes something as simple as like a medium tank, like a Sherman, which might be 200 plus points, and then you just stop it from firing for a turn, that is a massive, massive trade for you. Because you, yeah, your tank's not doing anything this turn, sure. Your tank only costs you less than half what their tank costs. So yes, both tanks wouldn't be doing anything, but you're coming out on the other side of that equation much healthier. Recky's not just useful for screwing your opponent over, for lack of a better term. It is generally a very good defensive buff as well. You may have made a mistake. You may have moved it out last turn and hoped that you'd get the first dice because you dice domination in the game. Maybe you've got 12 dice in the bag. Your opponent's only got eight or nine. You're like, I'm surely going to get that first dice. It won't be a problem. I'll be able to go first. That bazooka team, I'll be able to deal with it. And then suddenly the enemy pulls their dice. You could be like, oh, damn. Well, I'll take my recce. And even though I wasn't going to use it to screw my opponent over, I'll use it to now protect my vehicle just because uh, dice haven't come quite the way that I want. So it's a very good rule for keeping your tank alive when things have gone a bit squiffy and for causing your opponent to waste their dice. Now that gives us a good overview of the Type 92 tankette. Not only have we covered some of the stats, but we've gone into a little bit of the tactics as well. But now let's go into a deep dive. Let's lift up the rock and have a good look underneath. What is good about this unit and what are some of the limitations on it as well? Firstly, one of the best things about the Type 92 is how cheap it is. It's 90 points in most games. And if you're playing a 1,000 point game, it's not even 10% of your points. And you're getting an armoured vehicle. So it's just very easy to slot into a list. And it's not going to force you to cut corners or trim down other areas of your army. One of the big things we found when looking at German tanks, especially some of the bigger ones, even things like the Panther, which technically is a medium vehicle, it really, really cuts into your points. And especially at like a thousand point games, you're going to struggle to fit everything in that you want if you want a reasonably sized German vehicle. But the Type 92 is, and I know comparing it to a Panther is maybe a slightly or very unfair comparison, but I'm using it more as an example of like Japanese armor as a whole. You can get lots of Japanese tanks into your list and just not really cut into your points very much whatsoever you'll be able to get all of your bamboo spear fighters and all of your uh, veteran paratroopers or maybe just your regular ID infantry your, your grenadier squads not an issue your armor as the Japanese is very light and it's very cheap and it's good at what it does which is bullying enemy and that way it actually is very meta especially in a competitive sense but another fantastic thing about this unit and what i would argue is its best feature even over recce and its points cost is it's not a tank it is classed as an armored car in the bolt action force organization chart that means that it doesn't compete with a lot of the other armored vehicles you other tanks you can actually take the type 92 tankette in your armored car slot and you can still put a tank in your tank slot and when you combine it with something like the type 95 hargo which is the same points cost same damage value and comes with two medium machine guns and it also has a low velocity light anti-tank gun you will find that you have two armored vehicles two bully tanks for less than 200 points Whilst your American opponent might be struggling to fit his Sherman uh, tank into his army, or whilst the British person is having to cut corners by putting like a Churchill or something in his list, you are smashing it with your two little light tanks running around and you're bullying the enemy infantry and you're being an absolute nightmare. Japanese light tank spam is a genuine tactic and it's quite effective i am not just talking from a theory point of view i've actually done it myself in many many games and last but definitely not least type 92 does not have a one-man turret so many of the japanese vehicles have this rule and it's an absolute 
four lake it means that unless you just do a fire order you have to do an order test because your commander is so busy trying to command the tank and load and fire and all this kind of stuff and it can be really annoying if you just fail your order test even if you're regular, if not going to depends on you, you're on Leadership 9. That, you're more than likely going to pass it, as we mentioned before about Leadership 9, but still so frustrating. And so you find that one man turret is going to bite you in the ass at the worst possible moment. But the Type 92 doesn't have it. So it's actually always going to do as it's told, provided it's not pinned out. However, there is one very obvious problem with the Type 92 tankette, and that is it's fragile. Damage value 7 plus might be normal in the IJA in bot action, but it is not much to write home about in the wider scheme of things. It's all well and good, and we've mentioned it quite a few times on this video about being meta and having the light tanks and being efficient and bullying. It's all well and good until someone turns up with a proper tank. Even something as simple as a, a light tank or a proper light tank, like 8 plus or medium tank, one of the most common types of vehicle you're going to encounter. Every starter set and their mum turns up with some sort of T-34 equivalent or Panzer III. It just, it's just medium armor is very normal. And you have almost no way of dealing with it. And one of the most common ways that armies deal with enemy tanks is with their own tanks. You know, the medium tank with the medium anti-tank gun, it's just good. It can handle most situations. You don't have that in the form of the Type 92 tankette. You're going to bully infantry. Your HMG might allow you to wave your fist menacingly at other light vehicles and trucks, veteran infantry. But the moment that a big boy, the moment that a Sherman rolls onto the battlefield, you are going to feel very, very small. And your tank is going to get swathed aside extremely easily. So it is a very fragile vehicle and it might have tank, or admittedly tank et in its name, but don't think that this can get into any kind of armoured warfare except for when it's bully on bully. In summary, the Type 92 is a very efficient, very meta, and in my opinion, very good unit. It just suffers from the problem that all Japanese vehicles do, which is it's very light and so it can't stand up in a proper tank fight. But, of course, all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like the Type 92 Tanket or is there another vehicle that you prefer in your armoured car slot? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a big shout out to bon bon vert mad larkin marcus roberts mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs nick walsh diesel fox and august varney thank you guys so much your incredible generosity is a massive part of how i'm able to do more glory full time and it is a 
big driving force behind the channel. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.